that I am the best on this microphone, in that ring, even in commentary. Nobody can touch me. See, when I step into this ring, I am addicted. I'm addicted to the high that I get from them. You could ask me anything. You could have asked me about AEW. Oh, hey. Wrestling has more than one royal family. Taking his way to the ring. I'm a wizard. <laughs>
black and green Wardlow. For sure, I've seen a black and green Wardlow somewhere in the Rockford region. So, most definitely, I'll be copying Wardlow soon. Uh, definitely going to be copying me a Brody Lee because I just won the Ringside Collectibles Contest for Double or Nothing. Yes, my figures watching the, the pay-per-view this past weekend i i was so excited like i was just setting up all my figures to watch the pay-per-view and then my girlfriend helped me out by taking some of the shots that i wasn't able to because she was working right behind where the wrestlers were actually seated and she helped me out with the shots i i cannot thank her any more but I'm the one who posted them, and sure enough, I get the news. I get a DM from the ringside. I'm like, oh, did I post something recently that caught their eye? No, I won a contest, and I, it was between a Mr. Brody Lee or an Anna J. I chose Mr. Brody Lee. Um, R.I.P. Brody Lee. R.I.P. John Huber. Uh, Luke Harper in WWE. I. Man, I, there's so much to learn about Mr. Brody Lee that I don't know too much about because I'm an uneducated mark. <laughs> you fucking mark! Uh, yes, I'm very uneducated, but my opinion, I don't have a final opinion on anybody before I get to actually learn about them. So, if anybody comes my way, show wrestler, character, personality, uh, toy, I am very curious... But I'm never like dismissive, nor am I, you know, I'm, I'm more of a fanboy than anything compared to just being a mark and being like, oh, that person sucks. I, I felt like, you know, over the years that I've liked the idea of people and it, it's up to me to watch them and to, you know, kind of learn about them, culture myself and take a deep dive into their history. And if that's the case, then yeah, I will learn about them before I have a final opinion. But I hate being the follower saying like, oh, so-and-so sucks or whatever, so-and-so is really awesome. I'm, I'm very in tune with the idea of some of these characters, a majority of these characters actually. So let me take the time to honestly watch their matches, such as Kenny Omega. I'm a very big fan of Kenny Omega's like in-ring work. Um, I'm watching a lot of the behind the scenes of the Elite and I'm very much so uh, with Kenny Omega. Uh, Hangman Adam Page eventually for sure uh, the Young Bucks are really great too um, I'm definitely diving in and learning more about wrestlers uh, speaking of which I just caught me a wrestler over the weekend I can't wait to unbox him in front of everyone ladies and gentlemen making his way to Ricky Rhymes is collection we have one half of Jurassic Express Luchasaurus! Yes, we have a Luchasaurus right here in front of everyone. I cannot wait to unbox him. He is such an old dinosaur, isn't he? This is from the Double or Nothing from May 25th, 2019. Yes, that was the debut pay-per-view, I believe, of All Elite Wrestling. And this is crazy because I'm not sure what part of uh, Double or Nothing that night he was a part of. I don't know if that was a tag team bout. I don't know if that was the Battle Royale, the Casino Battle Royale. So, uh, there's so much to learn, right? So, uh, there's so much to learn with Luchasaurus. Uh, all I know is that right now, I'm, I'm very much with Jurassic Express. I'm, I'm so into the song uh, Tarzan Boy. It, it's... It's it's definitely something that can stick with everyone. I think it's something that everybody can get along to. So I'm all for it. I'm a very big fan of that. And we're definitely getting into MJF. I swear we are. But after that, I watched the CM Punk MJF rivalry. And it's one of the greatest rivalries of all time. It's literally, especially of this past decade, of the new decade, it's going to go down in history for sure of wrestling. Wardlow stole the show and so did MJF MJF literally did not show up on Saturday to FanFest leaving a bunch of fans behind and 
finally showed up on Sunday, leaving everybody curious about if he's going to show up or not. And he drops one of the biggest pipe bombs of all time on Wednesday Dynamite after losing to Wardlow, telling Tony Khan that he is a fucking mark. And if you don't pay me, you fucking mark, fire me. Fire me. He dropped one of the greatest pipe bombs of all time. He's literally telling everybody what they need to hear. And he's telling facts. He's being very honest about the simple fact that AEW buys all these ex-WWE stars and pays them more than the people that are actually on the All Elite brand way before WWE guys started showing up. What the fuck? It's, 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 it's unbelievable. But it's true. Believe that. It is so true that it's not fair to a lot of the guys that start showing up in all elite wrestling. It's not fair to the guys that literally are busting their ass trying to make a name for themselves when they're actually put on the sidelines in front of all these ex WWE guys. I can understand a few of them showing up. Not every single one of them. Tony Khan literally said, I'm not going to sign every single one of them just because they're good. You started doing it regardless. Somewhere down the line, you probably saw a lot more money. And you were just like, I don't know what to do with it. So I'm going to buy all these guys. They all have a home now. So it, it, it to me, it's just like, I'm, I'm kind of just over it. With all these guys showing up to All Elite Wrestling, uh, thinking that they could just go ahead and and start wrestling and doing the things that yeah they kind of just did on WWE, but but just kind of like shadowing or overshadowing all the All Elite guys, and they're getting paid more than MJF. NXT developments getting paid more than MJF. MJF fought CM Punk and had one of the greatest rivalries of all time. Greatest mic work in the past decade. None of the NXT guys can touch MJF. In the mic? No. On the mic, no. He fought Jericho in a great rivalry that I still have to watch. And Cody Rhodes. That's three rivalries that nobody can touch with him. Especially the Wardlow one. Now that's a pure all elite one. That's purely all elite. Two rising stars, all elite. Wardlow came out victorious. He got the contract. Now, the question remains, is this a work? Is this a shoot? Where does this go from here? I don't believe it's either one, but I do believe it's both. Like, I feel like it's it's a mixture of, like, you know, a shoot that, you know... He's saying all these facts because he knows it's true, and I don't believe you know. I, I and I believe it's also work at the same time because I don't feel like Tony Khan's gonna just get rid of MJF. I'm pretty sure he's gonna milk him of all that he has. Shout out Oscat. I feel like he's gonna milk him of all he has until like you know, it's all said and done. But at the end, I feel like MJF's gonna be the biggest star walking into WWE in 2024. If they don't get if they, if if MJF's not let go anytime sooner, but I do believe that you know MJF should get a raise. If anything, he should get a title shot soon. The guy's done all these rivalries with no fucking title, no title. Like, what does that say? All these other guys got pushed like immediately, like Adam Cole. With a fucking AEW championship, like, you know, it's like, and then he's got the, he got the tournament win? I'm an Adam Cole guy, too, but come on. I don't feel like that we're done yet with MJF at all in AEW, no. It can't be. And I saw, like, this fucking, vi- like, picture earlier saying that MJF was released, and oh my god, did I lose my shit. I really lost my shit. And... I literally thought that happened and it didn't so thank god i felt like that would have been a little too soon there's no way to immerse mjf into the main roster not right now at least i do feel like sometime soon and plus what we're almost gonna be in 2023 it's already june you know we got less than two years before mjf is to come to wwe about a year and a half 
So at this point, you know, at least get a AEW championship, you know, reign or something, TNT championship reign. But MJF has definitely had some like five star rivalries that in my opinion were just fucking great. Just gold. It's man. It's been really awesome seeing MJF in a good light. So, until that day happens, until those times come, we'll see. But I don't think he's going to be done with Ali yet. Not like this. No. It didn't, like, excite me throughout the entire time watching it. There was a moment where I'm just literally like, what the fuck's going on with Jeff? Jeff was dead set on AEW. This was going to be a healthy Jeff, really good Jeff. And then he starts taking crazy bumps to Darby Allen after Matt has told him to not do all this shit all the time. Oh, but the fans want it and stuff like that. I get it. But we also want you to be alive. We want you to be healthy. Otherwise, people are just marks. It sucks balls. It literally sucks balls to know that, you know... A lot of fans don't treat him right. And for him to throw his body out in the line just to make people happy, it's kind of sad all over, you know? Because it's like, we want to see the guy do good. I think Matt needs to bring Broken Matt back and Brother Nero because the crazy shit with the Hardy Boys, you know, I hopefully after this match, it kind of turns broken and we get to see Matt Jeff in a different light. Not too much swanton, not too much, you know, crazy bumps. We don't need that shit right now. We need a healthy Jeff to end AEW in his, like, you know, you know, his reign of supreme, like, in a, in a happy ending, not in such, like, a terrible form where he's forced to quit. And I slept through a couple matches, such as Jay Cargill's match with Athena's debut and Mark Stokely. Stokely something. Stokely something. Yeah, Stokely something. Welcome, Bivens. And then we also had the House of Black, Death Triangle, Trios match, Julia Hart joins House of Black and spits some crazy black mist into Pac's face just to get the win. Yeah, some crazy shit that happened with that. Some crazy shit with that. Did Adam Cole, baby! Yes, Adam Cole came out. Whoop Samoa Joe. I My streaming sucked that day. After that, we had Dr. Britt Baker, Adam Cole's baby, and makes sense now. It really does make sense. Couples win the tournament. Tony Khan bought an extra hour for the pay-per-view because Martha Hart's speech was unscripted, so they threw in some matches in there. I'm pretty sure like that Kyle O'Reilly versus Darby Allin, which was like a waste of nine minutes. Darby Allen, you almost killed yourself, man. What the fuck? We need you too, man. You like Sting with Jeff Hardy built together. Just a little guy. Why are you going to hurt yourself like that, bro? That's another figure I want. <sighs> a lot of tiresome matches, man. Then we got to the good stuff. We had some good stuff with Double or Nothing. I think we really did. Such as like that, that match that was what? The triple threat tag team match, bro. That match was gold. Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks was the un like he's an underrated wrestler in that entire match. The amount of stuff that he is for TV, he's he just needs that that push eventually. I hope he gets a good push. He'll he'll make it. He'll make it. The anarchy in the arena match, bro. All the fucking blood in that match. All the gore just. Oh, that was such 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 a fun match. Such a fun match. I became a fan of everybody in that match. I cannot wait for the Jericho Appreciation Society action figures to come out. They look like the Backstreet Boys. Come on. CM Punk versus Hangman Adam Page. Now, when I say finally, bro, it was like 11.30 at night. This match was great. Very unexpected shit happened. I really thought we were going to get a heel turn, bro. I really thought we were going to get a heel turn from CM Punk. That time when like Hangman Adam Page was over here like teasing the GTS right up on uh, CM Punk and all of a sudden the belt was in his hands and he was gonna just knock CM Punk over on the ground with the fucking belt just for CM Punk to just you know please like don't do this man please don't do this and then it didn't happen I, I was I saw a low blow I saw a low blow 
Didn't happen. Didn't happen like that at all. And then all of a sudden we had a couple reversals, some classic CM Punk, GTS, one, two, three, bam, we have a new AEW champion. And then, end of pay-per-view. Wow. It wasn't bad at all, y'all. Then, then came Wednesday, and Wednesday was some shit. Yes, that MJF promo was something else when he shot everything over. It was crazy. Crazy night. Uh, no word on where MJF is going with everything that's going on. Uh, definitely can't wait to see what's going to happen between uh, Jericho and Eddie Kingston. That whole Blackpool, Blackpool Combat Club taking on Jericho Appreciation Society again in a Blood and Guts match. Come on, I never watched the Blood and Guts match. If y'all need to recommend Blood and Guts to me, please let me know. What do I watch for Blood and Guts? Is there more than one Blood and Guts? Comment below and let me know what you guys think. Anyways, y'all. Next episode. You're going to see a Luchasaurus unboxing. Next podcast. You will hear me talk about this upcoming weekend's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Yes, you see the red on me. Hell in a Cell is coming to Chicago. Guess who's going to be in Chicago for Hell in a Cell? Yours truly, Ricky Rhymes. Yes, we got the boys going to Chicago just for this event. It looks like it's going to be a mainly raw card. Hopefully everything's not shoehorned. Hopefully everything is kind of just like, you know, in the right places in the right time. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen. So far, I think uh, Hell in a Cell between Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins is going to be a fucking banger. Absolute banger. Uh, as far as every other match that's going to be on the card, I'm a little more excited for Kevin Owens versus Ezekiel. That one looks like it's going to be an entertaining fight. Uh, Judgment Day taking on... Finn Balor, Liv Morgan, and AJ Styles. We'll just call them Too Sweet. Too Sweet versus Judgment Day. Six. We'll call that a trios match. You want to know why I'm going to call it a trios match? Because not all the people in that match are men. It's not a six-man tag. It's a six-woman tag. I'm going to call it a trios, though. It's, it, it's a trios. WWE should definitely update their terms. It's a six-mixed match tag team match. It's too much to say. Trios. Trios match. And uh, I think that that one's going to be very great. Like I said, Cody and Seth are going to steal the show. I Hopefully that that's the main event. Uh, it's definitely got a lot of main event caliber to it. Um, Becky versus Asuka versus Bianca. I don't know what to say about that match. I really don't. Uh, it's, it's not part of my interest at the moment. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of whatever. Some of the stuff on Raw is kind of whatever. Aside from Cody, Ver Cody and Seth, uh, Kevin and Ezekiel, Judgment Day. That's kind of like my go-tos for Monday Night Raw. Uh, a lot of my excitement does go to AEW. I'm not being very biased because SmackDown is definitely my show as well. We got Sami Zayn on there. What a great guy. <laughs> uh, we got Roman Reigns, the Bloodline. We got a lot more Riddle and, and the Usos and a little bit more Orton on SmackDown. So... It's, uh, that's the other thing too. I can't wait for this brand split to end. So far it's been happening, but I can't wait for it to end because, you know, there's, there's not much for everybody on both shows. It's, it kind of needs to spread itself throughout both shows a little bit, you know, kind of build up on one show and then display on the next, you know, that, that way you'll get ratings in my opinion. It, it's not about like, you know, what you're going to see next Monday on Monday Night Raw, it, uh, for whoever's on Raw, you know. Monday Night Raw has always been the main show. SmackDown is definitely like the main event show. It's it's kind of just been a little left sometimes, but it's whatever. I have a great time watching all this stuff. I have a great time talking about it. Um, I'm feeling a little bit more positive about stuff right now. So we'll see where things go this Sunday after I enjoy Hell in a Cell very first pay-per-view very first premium live event uh can't wait to see it i'm also going to be toy hunting as well i can't wait to record that that'll be part of the pod uh not so much the pod it's gonna be more of like a little vlog i can't wait to shoot that share that with y'all uh we'll be stopping at quake 
collectibles that is quake collectibles in downtown chicago i'm so excited i cannot wait to share with you guys what i'm gonna find over there hopefully it's a chris jericho uh could be an eddie guerrero we'll find whoever's on the list if you're on the list we will see you cannot wait to share it cannot wait to show you guys what we have i'm very excited about where things are definitely going at the moment and I cannot wait to share with you guys everything that's going to happen. I know this is an unedited uh, pod. We're going in a little more raw with this shit. Uh, just the way I used to do it. <laughs> so, anyways, guys. This was Ricky Rhymes. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for all the positive message. Thank you all for being patient with me. We will keep this shit as concise as time goes on. But right now, I need to share my message with you all. Thank you very much. This was Ricky Rhymes. And I'm out.